intensity of, or they may be hard to get from food. So when you make that decision about whether to do food or whether to do a supplement, it's important to think about the quality of the material, what the quantity that you need, and whether you can eat enough or do you, do need, do you need supplementation. Next slide. So here's an ex two examples, fish oil and green tea. You can get the good quality oils from fish if you eat a good serving of a dark um, cold water fish, salmon, mackerel, sardines three times a week. How many of you are big sardine fans here? Ah, this is a very unusual group. Most of the time people say, Ugh, no. So if you like the food, three times a week, eat the food. Just be careful you don't pick fish that have a lot of mercury. But that's not a very worthwhile solution for most people. They either don't like those kind of fish, can't get them, or they are worried about the mercury. So then the supplement might be the way to go. Green tea is another example. Very helpful food used a lot in Asia. But the therapeutic dose is six or more cups a day. Most of us don't live in an Asian culture where they always have a cup of tea on their desk. They're just filling up and filling up. So that's not realistic for us. So in that case, again, you might think about taking a supplemental pill. But that would give you an example of how you might make that choice. Next slide. So when you do pick a supplement, make sure it's well manufactured. And unfortunately, if you pay more, you don't always get more. So you need to either know of a good supplement or you need to let people help you determine what are good supplements. So um, sometimes in the middle of treatment, you may need to do a liquid where you can normally swallow pills. When you're in the middle of treatment, you may need to have specialized forms of supplements. And the amounts or kinds of things that you are allowed to take may be different during treatment than they would be for primary prevention or for after cancer secondary prevention. So again, we brought stuff for you to look at. It's on the back table. Many of the women who are with me tonight themselves are cancer survivors, so they really understand this issue very, very well. And we've gone through and made determinations about what supplements we think are of good quality and useful to patients who are dealing with this cancer issue. Next slide. Now, I'm going to close by talking about my new favorite um, supplement, which is vitamin D. And I think it's really totally underappreciated, and we've been very surprised about how important I think this is going to become to cancer patients. In the last, I would say, two to three years, a large number of studies, clinical research studies, have started reporting results, and the results have been pretty amazing. First of all, this is, I'm just showing you one slide from one study. You don't have to really know much about it. But the point here is that the further you get away from the equator, the higher the rate of cancer was for, for prostate cancer and breast cancer, two of the most common cancers, one in men, one in, mostly in women. And the idea is that at the equator, you get lots of sun. The further away you go, the less sun there is, especially six months of the year, very little sun. We don't have that problem here. And the idea from this kind of observation was that vitamin D might be very important in cancer prevention. And in fact, vitamin D is generally really low in all kinds of cancers, specifically breast, pancreas, colon, prostate, bladder, and many others. In fact, here at UCLA, uh, we started measuring vitamin D levels in our breast cancer patients, and 70%, 70%, almost three quarters, have a low vitamin D level. And I think that was a contributing factor in developing cancer. Next slide. So where would you get vitamin D? You can convert um, pre-vitamin D in the skin by using, uh, by using the sun. But how many of you have heard a message that you have to wear sunblock to block the sun giving you skin cancer? OK, that message everybody should have heard. So, and the time that you have to be outside is right in the middle of the day, the worst time of day for getting burned, and the time of day most of us are inside. And if we go outside, we're dressed like this. We don't have most of our body uncovered, which is how you get the sun onto your skin. So that's not really very realistic. And even in cultures, even in areas like this, which are very sunny, most of the people still are vitamin D deficient. So you could get fortified dairy products. That's a good way to get them, assuming that you can um, digest the milk protein and that you can um, eat, digest those things fine. Uh, you could, again, back to those really oily, dark fish are very good again. But most of us are going to need to take either a vitamin supplement or a, a doctor supplement for vitamin D. So if you take home one message today, 
it's please ask your doctor to check your vitamin D level and then change your diet and allow yourself to get up to a really much more healthy level of vitamin D. Next slide. So um, I don't think we're going to have time for questions, but I will be here for the break, and I encourage you to come and find me and ask me questions. And this is how you can contact us. We're at the Sims Man UCLA Center for Integrative Oncology. We have resources to support your mind, your body, and your spirit, and we'd be delighted to see you. Our phone number and our website are there, and we'll be in the back corner at the break, so you can come and ask us questions as well. And again, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Um, thank you to Mrs. Sadler, to Pashi, and to Pahi.